was 18. It was May 1991, and I'm in Rochester, New York, at Jane's Addictions Ritual de la Habitual Tour. I'm from a sleepy town in Ohio. 5,000 people make up our town. Newton Falls is a Jeopardy and Trivial Pursuit question. This is because it's known for its zip code 44444. It's also known for its covered bridge, which is the second oldest in the state and the only one in Ohio to have an integrated covered parkway, uh, walkway. Uh, I was supposed to go to college in the fall of 1990, but my dad had a motorcycle accident that summer. His leg was crushed, but the Cleveland Hospital is a learning hospital, and they were able to save his leg using new technology. I had to stay home and take care of him. I did this while working at the sandwich factory. The sandwich factory is a sandwich shop that will kick Subway's ass any day <laughs> if they ever went national. My twin sister Heather, however, went to college. She was going to Toledo University as a music major for the French horn. This irritated me on many levels. <laughs> her first year as a freshman you normally does. In those couple of weeks she fell back into her routine and hung out at Perkins with her friends from high school and she, yeah, and she met up with a girl named Angel. Angel was a waitress there. She was about four foot tall with crazy long hair and a bubbly energy. One night I decided to go with Heather. Of course Angel was working that evening. Sometime, somehow we got onto the subject of camping at Niagara Falls. Angel wanted to go and asked me to go camping with her because Heather couldn't. She was going back to school. I told her, sure. Going on a road trip sounded like fun. It's not like I was doing anything real anyway. This trip was an opportunity for me to flee while taking care of my dad and kind of feeling sorry for myself for not getting to go to college. I was a surrogate friend, and I hardly knew this girl, but I agreed to go camping with her. Angel wanted to do something fun about the time we got to Buffalo. We find a bar at Broadway Joe's, and I'm freaking out while she's finding a parking space. I'm not legal. I don't have a fake ID. What's that? <laughs> Angel says, just say you're a student. You'll get in. I'm pretty sure Angel isn't 21 either, but she walks right in and the bouncer looks at me and he shakes his head. I'm not surprised. I'm ready to sit in the car. Angel comes to the rescue and vouches for me. She's cool, she says. He narrows his eyes, but he lets me through. I get a Coke. We met this guy that took a shine to Angel. <laughs> We met this guy that took a shine to Angel. I'll call him Scott, because he was the most generic looking guy I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> we stayed until closing. Scott said that he crashes at this house and we should come by. I said no. <laughs> we were going to Niagara Falls. We have camping to do. Angel gives Scott's number anyway, and, uh, and off we go. I might need to point out now that the weather in upstate and upper New York was cold. When we left Ohio, it was spring-like, warm even. But where we camped, Goat Island, it was chilly, cold. Camping was a bad idea. <laughs> we knew that we, we couldn't sleep in cold like that again. The next night, we ended up staying in a motel, and in the morning, Angel reminds us that we don't have much cash if we want to stay any longer. We should, we should look up that guy Scott from the bar from the other day. <laughs> I'm not sure, but she assures me that he's cool. Angel calls Scott and we get the guy's address. We had some wine in the trunk that Angel brought and we decide we should give him our wine as a housewarming. That's great. We have wine to share. Good plan. <laughs> it turns out Scott wasn't there yet. We were told to leave, but Angel had her pink wine and was determined to give it to someone. So she, it off, so she handed it off to whoever told us to leave. As we were going back to the car, this other guy comes out of the house. He reminds me of James Spader from Pretty and Pink. He even had the hair, blonde, feathered just so. You brought the wine, he asked, as he's walking towards us. It appears that James is the leader of the house. He says, you don't understand. I don't know you chicks. I can't just let anyone in. Yeah, right, of course. I totally get what you mean. We go in. It's a college house, not much furniture, a couch. The dining area has a studio and pillows to listen by, and that's where we sat, sat with James as he talked with us, listening to the Grateful Dead while we waited for Scott. Scott finally arrives. He and James have a little discussion out of the room. 
James tells us, that thanks for the wine, but he doesn't want to sing us again. Angel thinks it's time to go back to Broadway Joe's. Scott comes with us. On our way to the bar, Angel tells me we have to prove that we're cool and all will be fine. I kind of have an idea what she's talking about, but not really. <laughs> Apparently, James thinks we're cops and we're looking to bust him. <laughs> <laughs> Angel does whatever she needs to do, and Scott calls the house a few times to see what it's like over there, and particularly to see if it was cool that we were invited back to the house. The word cool was used a few too many times. <laughs> Eventually, after his many phone calls, Scott says that everything is cool now. We shall all go back to the house because they're making pancakes. <laughs> we get to the house and we're skittish. We don't see James. Angel and I are starting to feel something's in the works. James did say he didn't want to see us around, but these guys are on the porch chanting, We have pancakes! Come! Have pancakes! <laughs> Gotta admit, we were hungry. We'd barely eaten since we went camping. Angel and I agreed we wouldn't leave each other's side and we have pancakes with some college guys. <laughs> I see that James is passed out on the couch. One of the guys there says he's usually like that and won't wake up till mid-morning. It's late and everyone decides to go upstairs to a large room that basically looks like where the Lost Boys would sleep if they were in college. <laughs> by the door and we talked about Niagara Falls and they talked about college. Very friendly <laughs> conversation. Good to know you kind of stuff. Soon we all started falling asleep. Angel and I huddled together and we held hands so we would know if the other moved away. This turned out to be a nice night. I hear something. A sigh of disappointment maybe. Oh man, you chicks are not supposed to be here. I'm staring at these boots right in front of my face, and I look up and I see James Spader. I'm up. I mean, I'm up. I'm getting my shoes on. Then Angel has the balls to say, Man, with all that Grateful Dead you were playing this afternoon, you don't have a, you're not a very giving person. So suddenly there's a shotgun pointed at, his fa at her face. Like, at her face. For real. James says, You don't believe me? I was a fucking skinhead. Okay, I'm sorry, what? A skinhead? Did I mention that I had my shoes on already and Angel was just standing there? <laughs> I told you chicks not to be here, he says. Does anyone else think that it's okay that these chicks are here? He points the gun at the other guys in the room. Nothing. No one says a word. Okay, the stairs are right there. I can get out. The door is right in front of the stairs. There's houses nearby. I think I had the car keys, but I'm also thinking at a time like this, this is when the car isn't going to open, the car won't work, I won't be able to get out. <laughs> and out of the blue, man, this is so uncool. A voice from the corner of the room. I'm sure at the time I had pancakes earlier with this guy, but right now I have no idea who he is. It was the right thing to say, and James puts the gun down. He looks at me and says, you have 10 minutes. I'm ready to go. Even while Angel had this look of defiance in her eye, I had the bags. She didn't have to do anything. She just needed to get her shoes on and go. As I was going downstairs while James was on the couch, I wanted to say thanks for just kicking us out and not blowing our heads off with a shotgun, but I felt it best just to get out of there. We're tired. It's been a long day. <laughs> We found a church not even five blocks or so away, pulled into the back of the building and parked. We woke up to the sound of quacking ducks. I took a picture to remember the occasion. Uh, as we were leaving, uh, as we were having breakfast at a diner, we grabbed one of the college newspapers and found out that Jane's Addiction was playing in Rochester. Sure, I was into some alternative rock like E.E. Burkell. But, <laughs> but I wasn't aware of Jane's addiction. Angel seemed to be very excited and assured me that it was great. The ritual de la habitual tour. Angel wanted to make up for any bad energy she may have caused, and she buys the tickets. Okay, this sounded good. I can totally go for a concert. I like concerts. I've seen Chicago. <laughs> I've seen Tom Petty. I've seen Paul McCartney live. I've seen Crosby, Stills, and Nash four times. I love concerts. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> we get to the concert and we find a respectable place near the back. As soon as Hot Henry Rollins opens the show, Angel says, I want to go down there. Okay, I'm staying right here. Leave your bag. I say as she goes right into the mosh pit. She was still missing when Jane's addiction started. It didn't matter. I was enjoying myself, and I had the car keys anyway, so I could get home. <laughs> <laughs> About the middle of the concert, the hypnotizing sound of steel drums began. Jane says, I was entranced by the song, and the lyrics about this girl that was totally crazy, but you couldn't help not to like her. With all the craziest that long weekend, this summer summed up my trip. This song summed up my trip. Those drums get me every time. I'm right there in the back row of some Coliseum seats and I see a little Terry Farrell dressed all in white with a little white Panama hat singing into the microphone. It's a strange sense of calmness. I haven't seen Angel since I pulled into my parents' driveway. I still owe her $50 of some pictures I took on the trip. I'll always thank Angel for giving me a true adventure and introducing me to Jane's addiction. Woo!